Imagine if you hired a financial advisor, but instead of a suit, they showed up in a suit, and it's the President of the United States. Today, we're diving into the wild world of stock market returns under the last five commanders-in-chief. We will also look at historically whether the Democrats or Republican presidents have provided the best stock market returns for investors. We will start with Bill Clinton, who served as president from January 1993 until January 2001. Bill Clinton's presidency is often remembered for overseeing one of the longest periods of economic expansion in U.S. history. The economy thrived during the 1990s, largely due to the technology boom, fiscal discipline, and globalization. The S&P 500 surged during his tenure, driven by high consumer confidence, low unemployment, and a budget surplus by the end of his term, the first in decades. The rise of the Internet and technology companies was a defining feature of the 1990s. Clinton's presidency coincided with the growth of Silicon Valley and the dot-com boom. By the late 1990s, tech stocks were skyrocketing, creating immense wealth, but also laying the groundwork for the eventual dot-com bust after Clinton left office. Technology stocks such as Microsoft and Intel rose by around 1,000% each, which made many early investors in these companies extremely rich. Whilst Clinton was in office, there were no major wars or serious conflicts to contend with, which would have helped keep the stock market volatility fairly low, Whilst he had scandals during his eight years in office, his presidency has a legacy of America being relatively peaceful. During his time in office, Bill Clinton overseen an overall return of around 210% gain, which is an incredible achievement. Next, we have George Bush, who led America between January 2001 and January 2009. George Bush's presidency was marked by significant volatility in the stock market, largely influenced by major economic and geopolitical events. The S&P 500's performance during his time in office reflects the challenges of navigating through both the early 2000s recession and the 2008 financial crisis. Bush inherited a market that was already reeling from the bursting of the dot-com bubble in 2000. The S&P 500 experienced a significant decline during the early years of his presidency with the index dropping by about 34% from January 2001 to its low in October 2002. The terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001, exacerbated the market downturn, leading to further declines as investor confidence was shaken. The attacks led to heightened uncertainty, which was reflected in stock market volatility. The stock markets were closed for four trading days following the September 11th attacks, marking the longest shutdown since the Great Depression. When the markets reopened on September 17, 2001, the S&P 500 fell by nearly 5% in a single day, with a total loss of over 11% for the week. The attacks heightened fears of further terrorist incidents and led to widespread uncertainty about the U.S. economy's stability. This uncertainty contributed to a significant sell-off in the stock market as investors moved to reduce their exposure to risk. Bush's subsequent military actions, including the invasions of Afghanistan and Iraq, were initially met with support and helped stabilize the market in the short term. However, the prolonged nature of these conflicts, coupled with the economic strain they imposed, contributed to market volatility and ultimately played a role in the broader economic challenges that defined the later years of Bush's presidency. George Bush finished his term with a lousy stock market return of minus 40%, which marks a dreadful period investors endured during his eight years in office. Next, we look at Barack Obama, who became president in January 2009 and left office in January 2017. Like the previous two presidents, he did the full eight years. Barack Obama took office during one of the most challenging economic periods in modern history, the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis. The stock market had suffered a severe downturn, and the economy was in a deep recession. Despite these challenges, the U.S. stock market experienced a remarkable recovery during Obama's presidency. Obama was inaugurated in January 2009 
just as the stock market was hitting its lowest point since the financial crisis. The S&P 500 reached a low of around 676 in March 2009, down nearly 60% from its 2007 peak. Through a combination of government stimulus and actions taken by the Federal Reserve, the market began to stabilize and recover. By the end of 2009, the S&P 500 had gained approximately 23.5% from its March low, signaling the start of a recovery. The latter part of Obama's presidency saw more moderate but still positive stock market performance. From 2014 to 2016, the S&P 500 continued to grow, albeit at a slower pace, as the economy transitioned from recovery to expansion. By the time Obama left office in January 2017, the S&P 500 had risen by dramatically, making it one of the strongest performances for any U.S. president. The Dow Jones Industrial Average and NASDAQ also saw significant gains, with the NASDAQ nearly tripling during his tenure. Obama's presidency is widely credited with overseeing a strong recovery in the stock market as the economy rebounded from the Great Recession and entered a period of sustained growth. The S&P 500's gain of approximately 166% during Obama's eight years in office was an important period in history for investors as many improved their net worth dramatically. Next up, we have Donald Trump, who led the country from January 2017 until January 2021, which is the shortest duration of president in recent times so far on this list. Donald Trump's presidency was marked by strong stock market performance, driven by tax cuts, deregulation, and overall economic optimism, though it was also punctuated by significant volatility, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Following Trump's election in November 2016, the stock market rallied significantly, a movement often referred to as the Trump rally. Investors were optimistic about Trump's promises of corporate tax cuts, deregulation, and infrastructure spending. Trump's aggressive stance on trade, particularly the trade war with China, introduced significant volatility into the markets. While the market continued to grow, periods of sharp declines occurred in response to new tariffs and escalating trade tensions. The COVID-19 pandemic triggered one of the fastest bear markets in history. From February to March 2020, the S&P 500 dropped by about 34% as the scale of the pandemic and its economic impact became apparent. In response to the pandemic, the Trump administration and the Federal Reserve implemented massive stimulus measures, including a $2 trillion economic stimulus package. The market quickly rebounded, with the S&P 500 recovering all its losses by August 2020 and finishing the year up by around 16%. Donald Trump's presidency saw robust stock market growth, with the S&P 500 increasing by nearly 68%, from January 2017 to January 2021. His policies, particularly tax cuts and deregulation, fueled corporate earnings and investor confidence, leading to strong market performance despite periods of significant volatility due to trade tensions and the global pandemic. Lastly, we have sleepy Joe Biden, who, if viewing, would probably be fast asleep by this point. Joe Biden has led the country from January 2021 until present day, although he will be leaving office after the upcoming election. Joe Biden's presidency has been marked by significant market volatility, driven by various factors, including the ongoing impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, inflation concerns, supply chain disruptions, and geopolitical events. Despite these challenges, the market has seen periods of strong performance, particularly during the initial phase of his presidency. 2022 brought significant challenges as inflation rates surged to their highest levels in decades, prompting the Federal Reserve to begin raising interest rates aggressively. This led to increased market volatility and a downturn in stock prices as investors worried about the potential for an economic slowdown. The Russian invasion of Ukraine in February 2022 exacerbated global market volatility contributing to higher energy prices and increased uncertainty. Biden's economic policies, including the American Rescue Plan, infrastructure spending, and efforts to manage inflation, 
have had mixed impacts on the market. While initial stimulus measures helped boost the economy, inflationary pressures and subsequent rate hikes have led to market challenges. The S&P 500's overall performance during Biden's tenure has been relatively modest, with a gain of approximately 10% as of mid-2023, highlighting the complex economic environment he has navigated, or some would argue, his lack of ability to run the country due to cognitive decline. If we now deep dive into both major political parties' performance, the average stock market return during the tenures of Democratic presidents is 128%. Both Clinton and Obama presided over significant bull markets, driven by strong economic growth and recovery from economic downturns. Whilst the average stock market return during the tenures of Republican presidents is 14%. The negative performance during George Bush's presidency, influenced by multiple crises, significantly drags down the average. Based on the data from these five presidencies, Democratic presidents have overseen significantly higher average stock market returns compared to their Republican counterparts. This analysis shows that periods of strong market performance under Democratic presidents were driven by tech booms, economic recovery efforts, and robust economic policies that promoted long-term growth. 